All right, hello everybody. I'm gonna start a 15 minute rapid game again. So let's go for it. As you can see, I figured out how to get this cursor shown on my streaming software. So that's a plus. Now I don't have to worry so much about saying words without referring to the squares. And we're going to go for a game, 1700 to 2000. A little more open than usual. We'll see who, who picks us up. Today is Tuesday. I believe it's January 10th. Yep. Starting off the new year with some with some chess. I think last time I also had trouble finding the game in this time control. People seem to like, oh, here we go. Simbasage. Don't know how to say that. Um, should we do something different or just play the normal? Uh, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Play queen, queen's pawn opening. Let's check this player's stats. Um, should probably do that in a different window. But looks like they're pretty consistently where they are now. They're playing the knight f6 variation and then d4. So I wonder, it's probably just a move order thing. If I take them, they take with the knight, and then I move my knight out. That's what I usually like to do against this. being pawn takes, knight takes, pawn c3, or knight c3. Then if they take, I get to reestablish my pawn on, on c3. Any reason not to do that? I mean, I could just proceed as normal. Yeah, let's just proceed as normal, stay flexible. We'll see, we'll see what they have in store for us. Okay, just a normal queen's queen's gambit declined. So we'll take as usual and play the trusty bishop c5, g5. Just pinning the knight to the queen. Developing my dark squared bishop so I can play e3, which protects the pawn after my bishop's out and opens up the light squared bishop. I might play a different strategy than normal this time. One thing you can do is uh, e3, say bishop d3, and then instead of the normal knight f3, you could go knight e2 and then pawn e3 and go for a hard center. But they play an early bishop. My first thought is, how about I play queen b3? That would attack the bishop and also attack the pawn. Which, after the bishop takes the knight, the pawn would not have enough defenders, which would kind of ask the bishop to take my knight. In which case I could take with the pawn, I'd get an open b-file. But what... any downfalls to that? You've got to protect the bishop, so how would they do it? Probably with knight development. If the knight develops, I can just play a3. 
and then the bishop would move and I could go for my plan. That's enough convincing for me. So what to do here for black? They have to worry about this pawn, yet they also have to worry about the bishop. I might just be winning. The, I think they might have to take the knight. If they don't take my knight, I should be winning the d-pawn. Yeah, so against this, well, I fail to realize that the d-pawn for me is hanging. Is it though? Because their bishop, if they take with the knight, the bishop's hanging. I could take the bishop after they take, but then they would get the c2 check, forking my king, my queen, and my rook. So I don't want to do that. And I can't play a3 because of knight takes pawn and then they'd be attacking my queen. So it seems like just protecting the pawn is what I should do, which also opens up, huh, weird, also opens up my light squared bishop to be developed and re-threatens my original plan. Of playing a3. So, unless they, if they address this plan and there's no straightforward, yeah, they just castle. So can we do it? Uh, A3. The only problem is that my king side's pretty underdeveloped. After all is said and done. And it's all just for this one measly pawn, so I'm not sure if it's really worth it at this point. Everything's still sort of forced. Um, you know what I can do? I can play bishop b5. This would attack the knight. If the knight gets taken, I get to take the bishop. So that's one possibility. It also develops my light squared bishop, so I like that. The pieces are sort of tied down in a weird way, all of all of Black's pieces, so I want to take advantage of that. Other candidates, I mean, they've got the g4 square on lockdown, so bishop coming here could be annoying, but I haven't yet developed my knight. When the knight comes to f3, usually it's annoying if their bishop comes to g4, but I haven't made that happen yet. So let's do this. This way I could even bring the knight to e2, staying flexible, trying to keep them from being flexible. If I was them, I, I would probably capture my c3 knight with a bishop because there's a lot of tension and it seems like a, a bad move from black and there might be a tactic somewhere. Either that or if they want to keep the bishop, I would move the bishop back. But if they move the bishop back, then I get this pawn as was the original plan. So it seems like it's already tricky for them. So defending the bishop with the queen.
That way if I take, then it's still protected. It's a slippery slope though, isn't it? It also unpins the knight. Now I'm thinking about f4. Force the queen to move. Would probably have to move to the square, e7. But on e7, I also don't want to. They're developing all their pieces, so I might fall behind in development if I'm not careful. That is an offensive square for the queen. I guess one thing about f4 would be it would push the queen back to a less offensive square. It's pretty much forced to go here as far as I can see. Unless there are some threats I'm not aware of. I guess, okay, the threat is to play knight to e4, which is a double attack on my knight. But it's okay. My, my knight's defended twice. So I don't have to worry about that yet. So still want to play knight e2 and I want to play bishop f4 let's just err on the side of development I have to keep in mind that my light squared bishop has less squares now and also that it's weakly protected only by this knight. If I wanted to, I could play a4 to defend the bishop. But I'm not sure how useful that is. It'd be nice to castle so that I finally unpin this knight. I don't really want to play a3 and force him to capture. I would like for him to capture, or I would like for them to capture on their own so that I have another move to do something else. So what do they want to do now? They want to develop the light squared bishop. They're probably also wondering about this pressure on the knight, but I think it's okay for now. Still, castling is probably good because it reopens, it allows this knight to come over and capture here. So what are they trying to do with that move? They're protecting the knight. They're also potentially having discovered attacks on my bishop. But my bishop's protected, but it's weakly protected. So is there anything I should be concerned with? A move like knight a5 could be met with queen a4. And then bishop takes, queen takes. Hold everything's still together at that point. So probably castling's in order. Luckily for me, so 
I guess now they've got, they're building up a kingside attack. I should have thought about that earlier, but luckily something like g4 can be met with bishop f4. g4 would be threatening the h2 square. So, so far safe and sound. Pretty interesting position. Lots of tension. I like the fact that their d pawn can't be protected with a pawn until their knight moves. So what else about this position? So that was, we looked at that. <clears throat> Again, is there any reason why a4 can't be played? I suppose their plan, though, is to get the knight into c4. but I don't know if I have any other refutations besides this move. And they can't, oh, I see, actually. Then they have pawn, pawn up, so that's no good. So, is there anything else tricky that I have? Well, actually, my knight's protecting my bishop, so it's okay, I can retreat the queen. But where to go? Just back to c2. This is pointing towards their king, the b1 to a7, h7 diagonal. Seems reasonable, keeps the rooks connected. <clears throat> if they take the knight, I can take with my knight and still defend my, my bishop. <clears throat> I'm a little bit down on time, so I might want to start picking up the pace of play. I guess if they don't take <clears throat> my knight, what I can do, or my light squared bishop, I should take their light squared bishop. They would have to take with the queen, and then I can take their knight with my bishop. They would have to take with the pawn. And that's one of the least desirable pawn captures, leaving their pawn structure and rex. And the king a little bit open for attack. So that would be nice. I guess if they don't, well, actually, I can force them to take my knight by playing a3 now, because the queen, I wonder how long this is possible, uh, the queen blocks escape route of the dark squared bishop, so. The 
dark squared bishop in turn protects the knight. The knight's sort of on the edge. The knight on the rim is dim, they say. But it's headed towards, I can't forget that it's headed towards c4. So, at this point, I still could play b3, which would take away any control of the b4, c4 square. So I got to keep that in mind. I want to maintain the ability to play b3. Right. Now, really. So what's the point? I mean, obviously, so I've got to retreat the bishop. I don't want to go to a4, because then I, they would have b4, bishop goes back, knight takes, pawn or queen takes. Then my light squared bishop's gone, which is a nice piece. And their knight, which is on the edge. Um, is They are able to exchange it for my better piece. So I want to keep it. So what happens if I go to d3? It seems like a totally fine place for my piece. Are there any other threats in the position? I don't see any, so I'm just going to play this, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, back to it. No move yet. So I'm surprised that they did that somewhat. The knight, they have to be wary of their knight because it cannot retreat backwards anymore. And also now I've got this queen bishop battery on the light squares. So I'm threatening Bishop takes, f6, capture with the queen, bishop takes h7 with check, and then just move the, the bishop right back, which would win a pawn, and a kingside pawn at that. So they, they address that threat by weakening the dark square is around their king. So now their knight is only defended by the queen. So I'd love to make the queen move. But I'm not sure how to make that happen.
another interesting and their their dark squared bishop remains kind of trapped I feel like I've got so much pressure, yet I'm just not sure the best way to make use of it. So now I'm thinking I could move my knight my C knight somewhere which would threaten a3 which would win the bishop it does disconnect my rooks but I think that's okay and the only way for them to save the bishop would be to either move the knight in which case I'd win a pawn or to move the queen back into this pin, which also looks nice, but might save the bishop. But I don't have much time, and I don't want to lose on time. So maybe a little bit of simplification is the right idea, given the timing situation. The interesting thing is I don't even have to take back with the knight. <clears throat> I could take back with the pawn. I mean, that's not a particularly good square for my knight anyways, is it? I could try to go for a, a pawn attack in the center after this move. I can also play a rook to the b-file. Go for some pressure there. or to the c-file. What else do I want to do? Okay, they're moving forward. That weakens the c5 square, but I don't see how to get there. <clears throat> I still want to somehow force the queen away. But I feel a, a rook move of some sort is in order here. I guess I could prepare, you know what, I could prepare f3, e4, that sounds good, I don't even have to prepare it, do I, I can just go for it, yeah, the idea being that if the f pawn moves, then I've got a double attack on this knight, also their dark squared bishop's gone, which means that this diagonal isn't quite as important as usual for my king. That's one thing I think of before I make a f pawn move. Okay, so it's a double attack. I guess, again, because at the time reasons I'm just going to take. I don't want to have to deal with losing this pawn. And I want to be able to play this move, which is a good move because if he takes, his pawns are all 
in shambles. And if not, then I get a push again to e5. So what happens? Pawn takes, pawn takes, knight takes, queen takes. Um, rook e1, queen somewhere. Queen g4? No. Queen c2 probably. Well, f3 would be okay too. I'd have to defend the knight and I would want to pressure the king side somehow. I guess I could take this way. Take, queen takes, queen takes. If pawn takes f3, then rook takes and I protect the bishop. Now I have the superior pawn structure. By a, a very small margin. I could take with the pawn actually. That might be a better move because it, then I have three strong center pawns and tempo as my rook attacks the queen. Yeah. I like this. Definitely like this. It looks like one of those positions where like it takes a lot of skill to actually make it a win even though it looks obviously better. So hopefully I don't fumble it up. So what now? Now the C4 pawn is unprotected and I have center pawns just waiting to be pushed. I definitely want to be wary about the g1 to a7 diagonal as long as the queens are on board. So maybe in a position like this trading queens would simplify my matters a fair amount. So with that move, I believe they want to play bishop h3. What if I play queen c1 to try to get a queen trade to happen? Looks good. Then I can bring my queen to f4. Also gets my queen off a light square. Since they have the light squared bishop, it's possible that that would be a problem. Maybe to make sure that I know my knight's undefended right now. As well as this pawn on e4.
So where will they move the queen? Maybe to g4? Highlighting my undefended knight? Where does my knight want to go? My knight doesn't know where it wants to go yet. Their pawns do a good job of restraining my knight if it ever gets to f4. So that's a double attack. So my options are e3 and knight g3. I think I like e3 a little better. Mm, actually, I think I, I don't. Because then rook e8, pawn e5, bishop f5, and then it's aiming to come in. I definitely don't want the bishop to come into d3. That would be a nightmare. So now they're probably going to play h5. In which case, I will play queen d1 followed by queen f3. Just trying to bring my queen to a better spot. It feels like I'm doing an awful lot of defending right now, though. I mean, wouldn't it be better to play queen f4? as was the original plan after h5. Yeah. So at all costs, I'd like to refrain from pushing the pawn forward and getting their bishop to a nice square. So I'm just going to try to get them to trade queens. The one time I will play e5 is if they play F f5, I think. If they play f5 and I can blockade it, then I think I'm happy. Well, I think that blunders the f7 pawn. And the c something pawn. Right? I hope so. So now am I greedy and taking the other pawn as well? Or do I just move back? <clears throat> I could also play... No, we're taking the pawn. That's how I play. I take the pawns when I can. I have to remember it's 15 second increment, so it's not such a terrible thing that we're down to two minutes. So now an ideal move would be F7 with the rook, rook f7. So they're saying, I'm just going to try to win off of checkmate, which is a good idea. Especially since they're pretty much threatening rook takes e whatever, rook takes e4 right now, because I can't take with my knight But what about 
Rook F2. It's hard to calculate. I think that forces the Rook back, though. Could be totally wrong, though. Another nice thing about this move is I could be preparing, yeah, I have no choice. Now probably, yep, keeping the pressure. And again, I don't think I have a good choice except going back to G1. G1 seems in order. Any threats? I'm happy that my queen's on f1. That definitely makes me happy. Because now, pretty much any move, it seems, can be met with rook f1. Otherwise, that would have been a scary move to see. Now it looks like the rooks come off the board and my chances of being checkmated decrease even more. Okay. Don't have much choice, do I? I don't think this is bad. It's protected by the knight, too, so now I threaten checkmate with this move. It's a good move. Covers. <clears throat> Square, I always have to be careful of back rank mates here. So, what's good? Oh, probably this is good, right? Check. <clears throat> now they're hoping that I'm going to go take the bishop and lose to a back rank mate. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, so complicated. I just want my king to be safe. Is that so much to ask? Um... Check. They need to move back to h8 or else I can take the bishop with check. Oh wait, they can't move back to h8. So I lucked out and found a way to win the bishop. Some reason I thought after this move they could go back to h8, in which case if I took the bishop, they had queen c1 checkmate. I mean, I could block with a knight, but it'll do nothing. So they decide we're just going to play this end game out, which would be a total win for me. So I'm just going to activate my king. They've got a light squared bishop versus my knight, but I'm also ahead two pawns. Another good thing is that most of my pawns are in dark squares. So what's the game plan? Probably the game plan is to win with my center pawns. What's their game plan? Their game plan is probably to try to win with the A pawn, huh? Um, 
So I'd like to get my knight over here to protect this pawn. Or to take their A pawn. If both of our A pawns come off the board, that's an uh, advantage to me compared to the current situation. And as long as it's on a dark square, the only way they can take it is with the king. So let's <clears throat> try to march my knight over here. Let's move this pawn up so it can't be taken. If they play hmm, c4, Okay. Hmm, end games, end games. I really want to try to get my knight over here. I also need to bring the king up. So this <coughs> allows me to start at two of those goals. I don't think my knight over there is going to be enough on its own to win any of these pawns. But on this, I could play this, right? I think that was a blunder. Not exactly, because this pawn's under attack. So now I'm threatening c4. Which I'm going to go ahead and do. This should win the c pawn. And these pawns should be enough to get a promotion and win the game. Yeah, just want to go ahead and take that pawn. Now I win two pawns. And all my remaining pawns are on dark squares. Hmm. That is a good spot for the bishop, though. So what do I do now? He's planning h3, h2, of course. But I also want to get... my pawns up. Uh, that probably was maybe not as good as king up. Hmm. I definitely don't want him to take this pawn though. I'd also prefer the D pawn to the E pawn because the promotion square is dark, right? I could be messing this up totally. I think this should be enough. Which I think. No. 
take first. Yeah, this wins. Because I want to take this. He can only sacrifice his bishop for a single pawn. See one, 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 one. one. Sink, sink. I think this wins. I hope so. So let's see, e3, c6, e4, hello, <clears throat> thanks, yeah. Yeah, this is a win. Pawn's coming up. Cool. It's a good game. Just tell the opponent, good game. And we'll go on to analysis. So again, we don't want to see the computer analysis yet. We want to start from the beginning. So interesting game with a lot of tension in the middle game. And it was pretty neck and neck. I was able to mess up the pawn structure, but the game was kind of decided by a, a blunder on the opponent losing sight of the f7 square. So we get a queen's gambit declined with b4. No. I could have chased the bishop and something like this would be totally fine for me with this one extra center pawn for me. So if they go back, I could do something like this. And I've got a huge space advantage on the queen side. This is probably another good way to go. So what happens after this? Castles? Bishop here. Uh, I don't know. Looks like it's probably another good way to go for me. I choose the queen out here thinking um, something like castles could be met with takes, takes, takes. But here even, it's not so clear, is it? No, not there. If they're here. No, not there. Because then checkmate. Um, 
Hmm. Now the rook has to move. Maybe I have a slight development lead, but it wasn't really as much of a pawn as I expected. It's always the case with these center pawns, there's some sort of tactics going on in the beginning of the game. But still, instead, we get the knight to c6. And here I was saying, let's say I just, um, what did I do? Yeah, let's say, I don't know, what else would you do with this? This can't be met by this because, check, I was talking about that too. So I chose to defend. Another way to defend would be like this, but then they get this. That's probably less pleasant than the pawn. So castles. That was probably a good idea. I could have also done this. But what am I gaining? Not sure where the bishop wants to go. Maybe the bishop goes back here and this knight's unpinned again. It's a lot of standard things to be done. But they chose to play aggressively. I wonder if there was something. I wouldn't be surprised if I missed a tactic somewhere. Because again, this takes away all the escapes. Well, it doesn't take away all the escape squares yet. But things certainly look fishy for black. I could have, I mean, one thing I could have done is taken, because that would force them to take with the pawn. Because if they take with the queen, the knight's on, the bishop's undefended. That might have been better, but I didn't want to just play off of a slight structural advantage this early in the game. It's probably not enough to win. And I liked my bishop. So I just developed the knight. Again, as I said, in a way so that this move is harmless. So here... Now I can't really take it and inflict a structural damage. So I just castle. Idea being if I get a free move, I can take, 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 which would be deadly. But instead, they threaten my queen. And I was lucky that my knight was defending my bishop. I didn't realize that at the time. Because I was originally planning this, not realizing that it runs right into this. Wait. That's fine too, though, is it not? I mean, I moved my... Bishop away, pawn comes forward. It's definitely messy, that's for sure. Probably here. If they take, they get an isolated pawn, queen's pawn. So here. Yeah, I don't know. This is a little more straightforward anyways. 
that seemed like a bad idea. And why is it showing me these lines? I don't want this. But yeah. So I was thinking here, this was a point where I wanted to make a different move. Let's say move here. The thread again is this. And the, obviously the bishop's trapped. So here I was saying they could move here, giving the bishop this escape route. But then I went in a pawn. The other option is here, which I thought was better because they still have to protect this piece. And I don't see a clear win from here. Bishop's just going to come back here. And everything looks solid. So maybe it was a good thing I didn't go for that. We'll see what the computer says later. I just then said I was getting down on time. That's interesting. But I shouldn't be looking at the computers. These lines are really annoying. I was happy with this plan. Peter thinks I'm messing up. Not surprised. And that was, of course, the big blunder. Yeah, it looks like I blundered that too. Whatever. I don't know why the arrows came up. I told it not to do the valuation. But since they did, I guess it's time to go back into the valuation. Or the analysis with the computer. So, I had 5 inaccuracies, 4 mistakes, and 2 blunders for a 48 average semi pawn loss. They had 13 inaccuracies, 6 mistakes, and 5 blunders for a 67 average semi pawn loss. So we'll go through the beginning pretty quick. There are standard moves until we get to a position where something bad happens or I wanted to ask the computer what to do. Really, so here, what's the line? Take, queen takes, oh. I didn't see that at all. I mean, I was looking at this deep on the whole time. So it's right here. And their other option is to take Oops. Here. Why not here, though? So I do win the pawn, but apparently they've got big compensation on my king in the center. It's hard to see all of that. 
But it would have been nice to at least see that the pond was hanging. Was it not hanging this whole time? In that sense? Yeah, I definitely should have noticed that. For a few moves. Okay, so there's one thing. But I didn't take it, which was apparently the mature decision, except I didn't think about any of that stuff. Yeah, that was forced pretty much, huh? What about this line I was saying? Is this okay too? Yeah, this is okay. Yeah. So that's right. And that was a huge mistake, apparently. I mean, I knew it looked really awful, but I wasn't able to punish it. So what's the point? Take here, take with the queen. Uh, I'm attacking the knight. But what about this? I don't understand. Oh, I do understand. Wow. That's cool. So how does this, the reasoning behind all this, I definitely didn't see that, is to get the queen this diagonal. What was the line? Because now the threat is to trade queens and now I've got a double attack on the knight and the knight. So I'm gonna win a piece. So I definitely didn't see all that, but what's the real line? The other line is this, knight goes here, attack the knight again, and same idea. Yeah, same idea, but my queen gets there a different way. Because now if he trades, it's still two knights under attack. But I didn't see any of that. So I decided to take... It's interesting because I didn't think anything about the queen taking. Well, I mean, the reason I would have taken with the queen was to keep the C file open and the B and the A pawns um, connected. And I thought it was more important to have this pawn in the center. But really it was a tactical idea with the queen coming to this diagonal. But again, I was kind of low on time at this point, so I didn't think too hard about it. Now apparently things are okay. That seemed like a good move to me. I wonder what the downfall is. The downfall is this. Idea being... I'm not sure. I mean, I did end up playing this F3 idea. There must be a long-term advantage of something like this for me. Well, what if I take right away? The A file is open and occupied.
yeah, and now f a1. Take, take, and I control the a file. But I don't know. It's hard for me to see the plus one advantage. Oh. Yeah, you guys can't see the computer eval. I'm going to have to change that next time I stream. You can see the moves at least, though. So it says plus one here. Um, and it's hard for me to see why, except for the fact that I've got the A file. And perhaps the C, I don't know, maybe this pawn's weak. I don't know. But anyways, oh, what was the other option? Instead of playing, what if they take? Then I take, am I bringing my rook to b1, a1 still? Apparently this is really powerful. At any point I can take this knight and win a pawn. Yeah, so this is like 1.7 advantage. Okay, so I could have sort of thwarted any queen sign plans of blacks with a4 apparently. Well, what if they push? I take. And what if they take? Oh, they can't. The queen's stuck. Of course. So, yeah. B4 was never a threat because the queen's tied down to the knight, which was sort of a theme of the game that I wasn't able to take advantage of in the game. So instead, though, <coughs> f3, which is still a decent, I've got 0.8 in my advantage at this point. I thought this was a good idea to try to get my pawn storming in the center. And the correct response, this makes sense, because if I am forced to take, then my center pawns become, I get another isolated pawn on the C file. But what if I don't take? What if I just continue as planned? Apparently it's okay. And if I continue, queen moves. I assume one of their rooks is going to come to the c file. So that's why they're trying to get my queen to move. So that when they take, I can retake with the pawn without leaving my queen under fire. That's interesting. This is just one of those tactical games where there's just so much going on and so much to think about that 15 minute game isn't even enough. Yeah, at this point, I've definitely got a space advantage and more active pieces, especially if they have to play a move like this. Anyways, I move forward, I take, now why? I thought I would, so what was I worried of? I was definitely worried at this point of this followed by this, right? Oh. What was I worried of? Yeah, this would have been way better. It's a double attack on the knight, and I also threaten the fork. I thought I was being safe, but I think I just miscalculated some stuff. So why does keeping that b4 
bishop on the dark squares helped me so much. I think because this knight is such an awkward piece later on in the game, that's good to have another piece controlling their side of the board. That's probably it because, as you see here, even if my knight gets here, where is it going? The square is covered, the square is covered, the square is covered, this square is even covered. So it had to reroute a lot. I was thinking about this too. Those are my two options. I guess I did them just in a different order. Huh. Why would that be a good square for the queen? I guess just keeping the king in, entrenched in this corner of the board. But no real threats to be had at this point. And so I can double up rooks. It's nice that the only pieces attacking this unprotected or weakly protected pawn are major pieces so that my knight's good enough. But instead, again, I was left running low in time and I wanted to simplify. So I brought this here. Apparently it takes away all. If they do capture, which I was hoping for, honestly, I thought this was better for me. But apparently it's just a draw. I wonder why. Is there really so little I can do here? I suppose if they can get the bishop here, then it's just kind of acting as a big pawn. And black is hoping to trade all the rooks, I think, and prevent me from promoting any pawns. That would be my guess, and I guess they could do it. But still, I figured this would be advantageous for me. And I think it's probably possible to win if black doesn't play correctly, if they take. But instead, they don't take, and they blunder the f7 pawn. So here, I don't see what's the point of this move. Really? Well, the two rooks for the queen. And I double up rooks. I don't think I would have wanted to play this, though. Definitely harder to calculate realistically in a short game. Still, I mean, taking the other pawn, I have a 2.5 pawn advantage. Definitely happy with that. So here, their threat, if I do nothing, is to take here. Idea being, oh, that they lose. <laughs> I was thinking if I took, then they have checkmate. Little did I remember that this was the only rook guarding the eighth, the eighth rank anymore. So I just tried to simplify. 
they obliged. And continued like so. And I'm just two pawns up at this point. And I can force everything off the board. Well, I thought I could. <clears throat> but I did all this. But I was scared if I took, they had checkmate. But my knight's guarding there. I forgot the real checkmate they were threatening previously was right here. So I made the game way more complicated than it needed to be. This was tricky though. Like I said, my plan was to try to take off this pawn. Which I figured if the king got over there could promote, but I guess I shouldn't have been worried about that because if the king goes all the way over here to promote, probably one of these pawns is going to promote. The bishop can only sacrifice it so many times itself so many times. Oh, but I blundered. I should have seen this for sure. I think I saw it right before they made this move. We're both playing a little too fast because we had 15 second increment. Yeah, I mean, this is a general outpost for the knight, but what is it doing here? I guess I'm preventing the king from moving forward on f5. Other than that, I'm not so sure. And then this allowed me to, I was thinking that with this move I'd be able to play c4 right away, but then g2 falls, so I had to protect g2, and they didn't see this threat, so I got to play it, take this, which is all good, I win two pawns for one pawn. Now I've got connectors here, a past a pawn, and as long as I can stop these two pawns from promoting, I won't lose for sure, obviously. This is complicated stuff, though, to really fully analyze. Yeah, my idea was to push these pawns. like so, and luckily I get this move in. And this basically completely removes any chances of losing for me. They were hoping that I would take the bishop and then they would promote the queen. And it might be a draw in that case because we both queen at the same time. But nope. I decided to do this. Didn't really calculate everything, but I kind of trusted that I could win. And I think most variations would have gone something like this. Yeah, I mean, once this bishop moves, I get my king to this square, which is a key square of the e pawn. If my king reaches this square, and they only have a king, and the pawn's right here, it's going to promote no matter what. Alright, so that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed. That's all I got for today, so see you later.